Hey guys, Jimmy here and welcome back to Richard Burns Rally for another video. Now, as I mentioned in the last video, today I'm going to be taking on the Rally School. Um, the Rally School in this game is well worth doing. It teaches you a lot of rally techniques that you might otherwise not know. And sort of gets you used to handling the car. Uh, it's so important, in fact, that the game actually stops you if you if you uh, haven't uh, done anything in Richard Burns in the new profile. If you go to Quick Rally, it'll say, no, wait, do Rally School. It's worth doing, you know, get used to the car, then go and do some rallies. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We've got two separate little courses here, the basic driving course and the advanced technique course. Uh, the basic driving, as, as, as it sounds, just gets you used to the, how the car handles. So we're going to jump into that first, then we'll get into some advanced stuff. Welcome to the first lesson. This exercise is not really a test. Try to drive inside the cones placed on the rally yard. Feel free to have fun and take the opportunity to play around with the car in this relatively safe environment. In this exercise, get a feel for the car and how it handles. Try changing gears, accelerating, braking, and using the handbrake. After you are done, park the car inside the yellow square at the front of the garage. This is the really cool little thing that you can do before you even get into doing any tests at all. Um, this little sort of square plane here, this little area you can drive around in. It's both a gravel and a tarmac surface, so it's really good to get out there and have a go. You are on gravel tyres to start with, so it's a little bit weird being on a tarmac with gravel tyres, but you get an idea for how things handle. Again, I'd recommend just come around here, make sure all the controls feel okay, because you're going to need them to, uh, to be feeling at their best to take on this game. I'm not going to do this, of course, I've done it already, but it's worth driving around if you haven't done it before. In this exercise, you will learn how to control the car at moderate speeds on a typical rally stage. You will find that when driving at lower speeds, a rally car doesn't behave all that differently from a normal road car. As long as you use a little caution, you should have no trouble completing the stage without incident. Again, this is a nice little activity. It just takes you through how the car runs on an uneven surface. You can see the stage it isn't exactly flat. Um, but we're going through this about 50k, 70k, so not fast at all. Just getting used to how the car handles and how it loads up in the steering. Start the car. Throttle carefully up to 50. You can stay in second gear for now. So you pretty much start in second gear because the car will accelerate and just roll it around at 60k, uh, 50k or so. Nothing really much. You can do this one handed, really, if you're up for it. But um. You can get used to how the car handles, especially when you're putting it into these dips. See this camber here, how the car, how the steering lines up. I just breathe on the throttle there, just gives you an idea of how much how, uh, how much horsepower I've got at my disposal. I'm quite easy to just smash the throttle and go very fast if I wanted to. But just getting used to how the steering loads up. It's nice and easy here. There's no sliding at all. We're not going fast enough to slide at this point. Um, but it's nice that this game does this because. Uh, modern games like Dirt Rally sort of encourage you to go as fast as you can straight away, whereas this this game is a lot more about preserving the car and driving within the limit. So it's good that you have this sort of uh, this, this introduction to the car. Nice and slow, nice and easy. It's going to slow down now for this uh, little hairpin. Just go to 20, 20, but we can get it faster. And then flying finished! I think that's how you do it. Hey, you drive like a natural. I know I do. There you go, nice and easy at the start there. Um, they do get more difficult, of course, but we are on the basic techniques right now, so expect them to be a little bit, you know, a little bit basic. <laughs> In this exercise, I will teach you how to brake safely and decisively from high speed to a standstill. It is vital that you learn how to brake without losing control of the car. Make sure you avoid locking the wheels. If you brake too hard, you are liable to lock the wheels and lose control of the car. If you notice that while braking, the car begins to slide and you can no longer steer, the wheels are probably locked. If this happens, lighten up on the brakes to regain control. A nice simple, a little bit like the Gran Turismo test if you remember those, just accelerating to a certain speed and then braking within a certain area. That's what we're doing here. You can't really mash the brake on the dirt surface because you will lock up and you will just slide on, so you have to sort of uh, go, in, uh, go, in, go in lightly and then try and modulate it from there. You must be at 100 when you reach the green cones. Go, floor it! Laura, I will. It's a hundred or so. Break. There you go, nice and easy. Down to stop. Damn right, that was excellent. Again, basic, but that is the nature of these first couple of lessons. In this lesson, you will learn how to take a long series of corners as quickly as possible. You will find that in addition to braking, shifting gears, and accelerating at the proper moment, positioning the car properly before each bend can greatly improve your results. By hugging the inside of the corner, you can use the camber of the road to help pull the car around the bend. If you position the car too far to the outside of the corner, 
you'll be pushed outwards and off the road. We've placed blue cones on this stage to help you find a good racing line. Try to keep the car inside the cones. Now I really like this little test because it teaches a lesson that is actually quite difficult to learn outside of racing. On a circuit, you know, lines are quite quite easy to put down, they're quite easy to uh, navigate your, your way around a racing circuit, but when you're in a rally stage, it comes up very quickly and you have to sort of learn to drive with the road. Um, this sort of teaches you to start getting into that mindset, you know, you see camber, try and put the wheel in there, try and uh, drag yourself around, try and follow the flow of the road instead of just trying to take a specific racing line. And this is a, a good introduction to that. You can throttle up to about 80 here. Oh, 80. Into the big leagues now. That's up to 80 k's now, just nice and easy. 70 before the corner, so we'll do that. There you go. That back end trying to kill me there. Going a bit faster than they want me to, but hopefully that, that they won't uh, penalise me for that. But you get the idea there. You see how um, difficult it is with this car to go slowly, because as soon as I breathe on the front, the back end goes, yeah, let's go, and you have a almost slidey moment, which is a bit scary, especially if you're doing this rally school. That's good. They didn't, they didn't mind me going too fast. That's all right. I was afraid they're going to fail me on that because I went a bit too quickly. In this qualification test, you will be on your own. You must complete the stage within the given time without having an accident. Don't be disheartened if you fail, as you have had a lot to learn in a short time. You can go back and review previous lessons until you are comfortable with them. When you complete the trial, you have qualified to begin the advanced rally lessons. To help you, we've placed guidance cones along the stage. If you brake when reaching the red cones, throttle at the green cones and keep within the blue ones, you should soon qualify. Good luck. Now I really like that about this rally school, saying don't be disheartened if you fail. Because I get a lot of people who speak to me either on YouTube or you know, whatever other medium and um, tell me that, you know, oh, you know, I'm, I'm not fast, it frustrates me, how can I be faster, etc. And a lot of people sort of get into a mindset of almost giving up, you know, they, 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 they aren't fast straight away, they aren't fast after you know, a couple of laps, they think, you know, it's never going to happen. This is definitely not the attitude to have in sim racing, I mean, um, personally I would rate myself as sort of above average as a driver, but... You know, I a lot of practice to get here, especially with Richard Burns as well. What you guys didn't see when I first got this sim back in 2013 or so is how many hours I put in just to get to be sort of competent. I mean, people comment on my videos and Dern and this saying, "Wow, you're you're really really quick at rally." And in uh, you know, in reality, I'm not actually that fast. I just look like I'm competent because I don't crash that much. He says, so "I'm probably gonna have a crash now because." this but that that takes a long time to get to that level and it's definitely work but if you put the work in you do get a result and it is very rewarding anyway let's uh, complete this basic test shall we okay i'll start the timer once you get moving we're moving if i pace myself for the first time i'm gonna sort of try and go at a decent ish pace through here try not to clip too many of the cones it's uh, a time trial so it's not too bad if i um do clip the cones more about completing it in a certain period of time. Taking six there. Oh, I love the rally school stage. Using a technique that we're going to be learning about in the next uh, bank of lessons. I break to get round there. I'm a bit too fast in. <laughs> Just murdering all these cones. Malone will be proud of me. Yeah, nice through there. Fast right, 30, forward. These Fast cones are pretty much in the right places. They are sort of right, designed for people who may be going a little bit left, more cautious than I am. 70. I'm going a little bit too fast for the sake of a rally school, but Fast I like right, going fast in this game, two, or trying to anyway. These right, forwards are very interesting to come through. They sort of launch the rear end up into the more in the air more often than not, like now. <laughs> wow, okay, that was scary. Managed to keep it and that is, that I think, excellent. there you go, basic school done. Whew. But you can still hear, even after a minute and 21 of driving, how tiring this is. Well, thanks old, thanks old uh, Richie B there for my Red Bull. Thanks Mr Burns, appreciate it. And now we're going to go on to the advanced stuff, which um, talks more about setup, more about driving technique, which is what, what interests me as a driver. I like, love learning about techniques and driving and uh, just sort of starting to get that little bit more performance out of the car. 
Welcome to the first advanced rally lesson. In this exercise, you will learn to use the handbrake to lock the rear wheels and force the car to swing around, allowing you to take very tight corners faster than you otherwise could. The lesson consists of two 180 degree turns and two tight 90 degree turns. So as it sounds, just getting used to using the handbrake here. Um, it's interesting using a handbrake because I've driven a couple of H pattern cars, of course, before. This is sequential and Lucky doesn't usually stall when you sort of whack the clutch in the handbrake around the corner. But um, that's something uh, you get you need to get into the habit to as well is the throttle control going around the corner because it's very easy just to whack the handbrake in, smash the throttle and stuff. It's really long arcing slides, which isn't really uh, good enough for this course. You have to have quite a tight handbrake uh, turn. So what I tend to do is when I'm going into the corner, I hit the handbrake, hit the clutch a little bit, the rear comes round, and then as soon as the car is pointing the way I want to go, then I hit the throttle. I don't slide through the corner, I, sl I get on the power on the exit of the corner. I'll try and demonstrate, I'll probably get it wrong, but hopefully I can pass this test while doing so. Aim to enter the first hairpin at around 50. Before the corner, turn hard into it and pull the handbrake. About 50, so... There you go, that's what I mean, nice and tight. For the 90 degree corners, you don't need to turn as by Oh, blocking a bit in a second there. You can sort of slide a bit out of these corners because they are 90s. There you go. Done and done. Could have been better. Oh, okay. Oh, I see how it is. Not quite perfect. Basically, I, m I might have uh, braked too late or not braked enough for one of the, uh, the corners. I have a sneaking suspicion it was the first 90, but we we've passed it. But um, I recommend uh, trying to perfect all of these if you are new to the game. It just gets you that precision, which you actually start, you do need in rally. You need to have quite a level of precision to get through a stage in one piece. The next two exercises will help you to understand how you can cause the car to oversteer and how to use this to your advantage. When you accelerate, the weight of the car moves backwards, giving the rear wheels more traction and the front wheels less, causing the car to understeer. When decelerating, the weight of the car moves forward, giving the front wheels more grip and the rear wheels less, causing the car to oversteer. In this exercise, you'll be taught how to maintain a very high speed through a fast corner. You will need to use a technique called left foot braking. This means that while your right foot remains on the throttle, you will brake lightly with your left foot, causing the car to oversteer. So for this exercise, you are not allowed to release the throttle pressure more than 50%. The advantage of left foot braking is that the engine maintains its momentum and the turbo keeps its pressure, giving you full power as you exit the corner. Now I really like this test. Um, left foot braking is something that um, I use quite a bit in rally and I imagine a lot of people do, especially when you're using um, left foot braking comes more into play when you're using a, a manual car because it's more difficult to do that because you're sort of using your right foot for everything. But in this car, obviously, we haven't got to worry about the clutch so much, so we can uh, really have the left foot dedicated to the brake. And um, for this for this test, of course, we, we're using the left foot to help us get round the corner, which is really interesting. What also, when I used to uh, drive this, when I used to drive a long time ago, back when I first bought the game, before I had a wheel to try it on. Um, see here, it says you aren't allowed to release the throttle pressure more than fifty percent. Now, I used to. Drive with a controller, and while I drove with a controller, I wouldn't recommend it for this game. By the way, definitely use a wheel. I used to use analog sticks, so the right analog stick, to, uh, you push that forward to accelerate, and then put it back to brake, Grand Turismo style. And because I did that, I couldn't complete this test. You have to have at least fifty percent uh, of the, the throttle on at all times. Like it, it marks you on that, so that's really cool. Throttle up to around 110. Let's go 110. I'll be probably somewhere in third or fourth Keep gear. Fourth. There you go. Maybe too far off the throttle there, but I felt like it was okay. Let's check it out. We need to do this again. <laughs> a lot to get to grips with. It's basically because I um I was a little weird in the brake there. I think I might have come I'm thinking I might have come off the throttle too much or I might have had a single input. You have to have a double input here, so let's try again. Create oversteer. Like that. There you go. That should have been better. Amazing drive. There you go. That's better than that. I just wasn't using the brake enough. That was my bad. Um, but yeah, it's... It just goes to show you how fine it is there. That that was on input. I did the actual thing properly, but it wanted me to sit, uh, to get the input down. And that's how important this left foot braking is for adding, especially in this sim. 
This technique is similar to left foot braking, but it will not produce as much oversteer. It's suitable for taking faster corners. By letting off the throttle at the correct moment before you turn, the weight of the car moves onto the front wheels, giving them more grip, reducing understeer. So this this um this whole sort of bank of uh, lessons here is to teach you about weight transfer in the car, which um, you'll see a lot because you see um in a lot of rally cars people pitching him from left to right in what is seemingly a heartbeat. And that's just having really good control of the weight transfer, and this is a a good example of this. I basically won't be in this test. I'm pretty sure you are not allowed to use the brake. You have to just use the throttle. So there'll be absolutely no brake use for me in this. Just using the throttle to come off that, and then hoping that'll pitch the front end of the car in enough for me to get round the corner. Throttle up to 100. Let's go up to 100. So that will be in fourth or so. I'll keep it in third. There you go. I think I might have gotten the throttle a bit earlier there, but it felt good. Amazing drive. There you go. See, not necessarily the fastest way through the corner, but it's just teaching you about weight transfer, which again is, I think, is vital really to this game. The power slide is the fastest way to drive through a loose surface corner. Initiate the power slide by lifting off the throttle as you turn in. Use the throttle and steering to maintain the slide through the corner. To exit the slide and regain grip, simply ease off the throttle. When reaching the exit of the corner, the car should be aimed straight ahead, ensuring maximum speed. So here's power sliding, um, you know, the classic rally move. You see all the rally cars doing this, having a big old power slide around the corner, kicking up dirt at the spectators. Awesome to see, awesome to do, it's very fun. Um, but I say you should use it in moderation when driving in rally. This is my opinion, of course, because... Um, if you're coming up to a corner which you can probably get round without breaking traction, then you should you should probably do that because try not to break the traction because the more time you have full traction on all four uh, tyres, the more time you're accelerating, the faster you're going to go. Of course, power sliding does have its uses, and I do use it myself as well. But uh, you know, just use it in the right situation. Like what, what it's doing here in the lesson is just teaching you how to do it in case you want to do it. So I'm not I'm not trying to say this is not a lesson you should be doing, but um. Like I said, use, use it in moderation. Accelerate to about 60 in second gear. When you reach the blue cones, initiate the power slide. 60 in second gear. And power slides. There you go. I've been using the brakes then, probably should have used the brake a little bit. Oh, that was bad. I've got understeer there. I might get a fail for that. Good stuff. Oh no, that's okay. Yeah, it's it's saying good stuff because I had a pretty bad understeer moment into the first one and second one. Sorry, but that that is the gist of it. You see, just use the throttle just to um, push yourself around, and when you're ready to get off it, off the throttle, and away you go. Until now, all your exercises have taken place on gravel surfaces. Now we'll go through a couple of tarmac lessons. In this exercise, you should just acquaint yourself with how the car handles when it's tuned for tarmac. Try to drive inside the cones. This is not a test, so feel free to try accelerating, braking, and using the handbrake. You will notice that you have much better grip and that you slide less. When you've had enough, park the car in the yellow square at the front of the garage. Now again, I, I won't be doing this because it's just sort of getting uh, acquainted with how the car feels. But it's pretty important because up till now, like you said, you've, all you've done is driven on, uh, on gravel with gravel tyres. So tarmac in Richard Burns isn't the best uh, in the world, it's probably its biggest weakness in my opinion, along with the pace notes um, but it's definitely worth getting used to how it handles because you're going to have to drive in it at some point and it is vastly different from the uh, the gravel surface again, I'm not going to do it because I'm used to how it is already, but I recommend doing it if you're playing along at home This lesson is the same as the gravel brake test except the surface is tarmac you will find you have more stopping power and shorter braking distances Make sure you avoid locking the wheels. If you brake too hard, you are liable to lock the wheels and lose control of the car. Same as before, but on gravel, just getting used to how the car stops. Um, the car is a lot more responsive on tarmac, uh, and that's something that uh, when you get into Richard Burns, it's actually quite a shock just how much more responsive it is. So, tests like this really get you used to just that responsiveness. Oh, floor it. You must be at 100 when you reach the green cones. Right, 100 Ks. I don't want to go any faster than that. There's a hundred. Brake. You're nice and easy. Stop. Hey, you drive like a natural. Damn right I do. Next lesson. 
Again, a lesson similar to the gravel handbrake turn. You will notice that you can apply more throttle to get out of the turn faster. Now, I always found this a little bit more difficult because um, in the tarmac, you have more grip on the tyre, so it actually takes a bit more to get the car sideways. And, I mean, with the handbrake, it's pretty much a sure bet you're going to have a slide, but um, it has to be a bit more of a violent action, I find. Hopefully, you'll see that or see what I mean with this, uh, with this lesson here. Aim to enter the first hairpin at around 60. Before the corner, turn hard into it and think about 60. Quick and the throttle try and turn it nice. Oh no, that's going to be a fail. Yeah, I clipped a cone there, that's a shame, it's going to be a fail, but you get an idea of just how, how violent you have to be to get the car to do what you want on the tarmac surface. Okay, well I passed. Apparently I didn't mind that I just missed <laughs> missed the uh, the third uh, handbrake pull, but okay. In this exercise you will experience driving with very soft suspension settings. With soft suspension your car will have more grip but feel less responsive. Soft suspension helps the wheels maintain contact with the road surface. This is cool. Um, you get a very brief insight to set up in Richard Burns. Sort of the biggest thing you're going to be doing in a rally car is having either stuff, uh, soft, stuff, that's not a word, either soft or stiff suspension. Um, it takes you through both of them. We're going to do soft first. And what I'm going to do, because I'm actually curious here, you, you, you do two uh, tests at the same in a row. I'm going to go as fast as I can on this soft suspension setup around this little course and do the same with the stiff and then see which is fastest. Drive around the course, staying within the cones. Right, let's go. Come to third gear quickly. And then use the handbrake just to get around. It says, get a little bit lethargic there. On the left. Almost want to use second here, might go down to it, there you go. Ah, oh, understeer. Soft suspension. Lots of understeer. Having to get it sliding to do what I want to do, really. Little kick of the, uh, the clutch there. Yeah, Let's so that was a 3289. I think that's probably the fastest I can get round there. I have to go sideways to get the car turning. Let's now try that on the stiff setup. In this exercise, you will experience driving with very stiff suspension settings. With stiff suspension, your car will feel more responsive, but will generally have less grip. Drive around the course, staying within the cones. Well, according to Mr. Burns, we're going to have less grip. Let's see what it feels like. Already, yeah, more responsive. Car pitching the way I want to go straight away. Having to use second gear, but not quite having the same effect it did on the uh, soft setup. Try not to hit anything using that power slide technique. So I'm modulating the throttle to get around the cone right in the middle there. It wasn't me. Come on, second gear. So I gave the finish and 31.99. So stiff for being a little bit quicker there, but it felt like it, I don't know it didn't feel quite as nice. The soft one felt a bit more, a bit safer to me. So maybe that's less than stiff setup, maybe a bit more dangerous, but faster, soft, safer, but a bit slower. The Scandinavian flick is used for taking sharp corners at high speed. In this exercise, you must first turn the car in the opposite direction to the corner, and then back into the corner itself thus using a pendulum effect to help turn the car. Timing and positioning are crucial. This technique is used especially when the surface is very slippery. It gives you confidence that the front end of the car will grip. So the Scandinavian flick is not one of those moves that I think is, yeah, it's, it's a showy move. It's one of those big rally time moves that everyone's heard of, anyone who's got any sort of knowledge of rally anyway. And um, But it's a move designed for older cars. These newer cars have a bit more grip. Scandinavian flick maybe not quite as quick, but again, the game thinks it's good to teach you it anyway, which I agree with. It's good to know the technique, and uh, you can still do it in this car pretty well. And hopefully, I'll demonstrate that in the uh, the lesson coming up. Accelerate to about 80 when reaching the blue cones. Uh, up to 80 k's. Keep it in second gear. There you go. Nice and easy. Slide it round. Out you go. Nice and simple. Feels very satisfying when you get it right. Amazing drive. Thank you. It, 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 that was a nice example. This, this test can be a bit of a dick sometimes, because sometimes you just steer left and you keep going left if, you, if you're too aggressive on the way in, but that was nice. That, that felt good. In this, your final rally school test, 
you must prove that you can use all the techniques I've taught you and put them to good use on the stage. To help you, Robert Reed will ride with you as your co-driver. Good luck. Right then, so we're going to do an entire stage of riding school like we did before. No pace notes, no 3D pace notes this time. We're just going to be up at the top of the screen and with uh, Mr. Reed beside us here in the cockpit. So basically it's a time trial to the end. Doesn't matter if we go off uh, too much, I don't think. It's going to be fast, so let's do it. Right, so handbrake in. Revs up and away. First gear engaged, second, third and fourth very quickly. Aiming to sort of dip on the inside. Put Will in there. Throw out to the right, nice. Watch out for this bridge. Oh, that was tight. Correct on the Ford just to try and get us lined up for this right hander. Taking a bit too much of the inside there. And go very tight there next to that pole. Very good. This is where we practice our left foot braking, so we'll try and do that through here. Very nice. Slowing us down nicely, getting the car onto the right way again. We can cut quite close to this pole on the right here. Driven this stage a couple of times, if you can tell. And using our left foot braking just to get through there. A bit slower than I'd like to be, but we're okay. We're coming up to Scandinavian flick zone. I'm not going to do one. Ah, how this I am. Not quite a violent one, but oh, round we go. Carry a bit of speed through the undergrowth. Keep it going. Keep your foot in. Keep your foot in. Moving out, flat out. Using the inside there to pull me around. Now for the two Fords. Bang. Bang. Fourth gear. Him just hit the keyboard to sit on my lap at the moment, so it's quite actually awkward doing this. We're going for another Ford. This one's a bit more violent. We've seen it before. It kicks up the rear end of the car. And boot. Very nice last corner, and that should be us done. There you go, 118.6, not a bad time through there. Get the qualification time by just over five and a half seconds. But that is it, guys. That is rally scores. My wheel decides to wake up. Um, I really recommend doing this. If you if you haven't done this, um, even if you are a seasoned Richard Burns veteran, you might learn something new. And if you are new, then I definitely do this because this puts you in the right frame of mind. Give the right techniques to go and actually attack the rally course and still being terrified of it. Actually saying that, you should always be scared of Richard Burns. Maybe just a little bit less scared. But anyway, guys, I hope you I hope you enjoyed that video. It was really fun to make. It was fun going back through the rally school again. Uh, if you did enjoy it, make sure to hit that like button. And if you really enjoyed it, hit subscribe to be notified of future videos. And uh, yeah, I think that's it really. So take care, guys. Have an awesome day. And I'll see you all next time.